Good afternoon, everybody. Fusion Phil here with Jet CAD Cam, and it has been way too long, and I'm excited to say welcome back to another Fusion Friday. Today, as you guys have may have already seen my previous video, I went ahead and went over how to utilize bar pull inside of Fusion 360. However, it was only at the post level. Now, since the latest update, we actually have a brand new toolpath called bar pull. So let's go ahead and jump in, and I'm going to walk you guys through how to use this. So first and foremost, obviously this is a turning toolpath strategy. It is hidden under the turning tab. Now, if you don't see it here directly, you may have your data panel open. You can expand out this menu at any time and find it underneath. Now you don't need anything fancy for this inside of Fusion. No machining extension is required. As for you on a hobby license, I can't justify whether or not you guys have it. However, let's go ahead and start with the basics here. So. I already have my toolpath set up. I already have my setup actually created with my stock and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and start out with a sub spindle grab. Now, something to keep in mind, Fusion always is trying to walk you through something. So you have to do a grab before you do a pull, and you also have to do a grab before we do a return later. So as you're gonna see here is we're gonna go ahead and just do our sub spindle grab. Now, where you grab is 100% up to you. As you can see, we're going from stock front, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my model front and let's just say I want to grab in one inch. As you can see, I've set my one inch depth in. You guys could also do something if you wanted a selected point being allowed to grab hard edges inside of your part, making this much easier. Now, keep in mind, we do have material out here on the front of our part and we're gonna see the math on that here in a little bit. I like my origin based on the stock, not my model front. That's another thing to keep in mind when you guys do this. So now that we've done our actual sub spindle grab, we can go in and we could do our bar pull. Now, if it's the first time any of you guys are doing this, I would highly recommend that you kind of leave everything as default as possible. There is some nice settings in here to be able to say, instead of a compensate the tool path, which means we're gonna shift our G code based on this dimension, or we can use a brand new work offset. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave my pull distance. I'm gonna change this to actually two. And the reason why you guys will see is because we went a one inch in plus whatever our stock to leave on the front was. We're gonna go two inches for our ball or pull length. So again, we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And what I like to do to verify if this is gonna work or not is I like to just post out this code. So we're gonna go ahead and post process. As you're seeing, I'm actually pulling just a Haas post here, guys. I would tell you that if you go and post this and you get an error related to something inside of the actual post not having functionality, this is where I would go get the latest version of your post or reach out to your reseller and get them to add this to your post. Now, if you're one of my customers, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll get this added as quick as I can for you. Or we can look at is it time for you to move to the latest and greatest post from Autodesk, which may incorporate some of those changes. Now I did have to make sure I had my secondary spindle turned on, of course, inside this post processor. But let's go ahead and hit post. We're gonna go ahead and create our G code. And now we can review our G code. So as you guys can see, if we run through this real quick, spindle grab, pretty standard here. Obviously we're going to that B negative 1.05. So there was 50 thou material between my stock and my model front. And now we're gonna pull out to B 0.95. So I do understand that it does say pull distance, which we did pull two inches. If we do the math from negative 105 to positive 0.95. However, it is not based on a pull to location. It's a pull distance, guys. So keep in mind that absolute versus incremental type stuff. We're incrementally pulling two inches, which puts us in an absolute position from our work offset of 0.95. Now, as you can see, this automatically populated, I have it plugged in, but let's go back and look at a few things that will actually make this much easier for you the more you're going to do it. So the first thing I would like to do is, based on this kind of strategy, maybe I wanted to do my part in sections. So knowing a pull distance or making multiple pulls could be your absolute best friend here. So we did a pull of two inches. If I wanted to, we could do a sub spindle return. So we're gonna go ahead and send the sub spindle home, keeping both clamped. And then I may come in and do another tool path strategy of some sort. Um, you may be doing grooving, you may be doing more OD turning, but then we can rinse and repeat, right guys? And 
just for demonstration purposes, let's go ahead and put my part off down here. No, I would not part off with this not pulled out fully, but you could, again, go in, do another subspindle grab based on wherever you want to grab. Maybe that is 1.05 in, as you can see here, again, grabbing one inch. I could do another bar pull of a certain distance. And then lastly, we could wrap that up one more time with a subspindle return, keeping both clamped. Or in this case, you may actually want that part to stay in the subspindle, which I made a mistake. We're going to go back and fix it. But we're going to keep both clamped this time because this would probably be where we would part off. Again, we pulled it out a little bit, did some work, pulled it out a little bit, parted it off. And now we're going to take that to the subspindle to do some work. Now, when I did do the subspindle before, we actually don't want to keep both clamped. We would actually want to unclamp the primary, right? And the idea here is, is that we went in, we grabbed, we pulled our bar out. We didn't pull it all the way out. We want to go ahead and now return, which means we need to unclamp before we return. We're not taking the part to the subspindle. We're actually leaving that part in the main spindle. So as you can see, again, you can pull your part out in sections, or if you're familiar with Swiss turning, you can extend out in little ch chunks of program as you guys feel fit to run, or you could just do this to pull the bar out so that you can get a part off length. Now let's look at a little secret tip inside of Fusion that we can set some things in an expression form to auto calculate our bar pull length. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go into this final bar pull, and I'm gonna go to my pull distance and I'm gonna click these three little dots. So now that I have this expression table open, as you guys can see here is there's an entire category of any and every expression possible. The couple that you're really looking for is I like to pull things like my surface Z high, and this is predictive. So again, I did this in my other video and I think you guys got a kick out of how we can self-calculate things. So we're gonna go ahead and say surface Z high, which means my stock front, and I'm going to subtract model, right? So we wanna go ahead and say model Z, in this case, we're going to go ahead and change that back because I believe I am off in my thinking where we actually need stock Z high. So even the best of us make mistakes, guys. So let's go ahead and start over. Stock Z high minus surface Z low. So what's happening here is we're setting our stock front to our model back. Yes, I know it's not model Z low, guys. It's actually surface Z low. That is the lowest surface in my z distance and as you're seeing is i'm getting a distance of 2.3 automatically calculated as you're going to see this automatically populates my pull distance now there's a few more things we're going to do to this but as you can see if i go in and i use my inspect tool and i go ahead and grab back surface to front now we're at 2.25 and keep in mind when we actually do our setup here in this case my stock is offset from front 0.05 so 2.25 plus 0.05 makes that 2.3 but that's only going to pull me out far enough to get me to this edge here now one thing i want to do is if i'm parting this part off i may want to incorporate additional pull for my tool width so again based on that part off cycle that i've already created i'm going to go ahead and edit tool and the information i'm looking for is in the insert tab in this width so as you can see here, we're using an eighth inch width cutter, 0.125. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to that bar pull cycle that we've wrote. Again, editing my expression. And now I'm gonna throw everything in brackets to make my life easy. And then I'm going to take outside of that minus 0.125, which is my bar length. So as you can see, my distance has gotten very, very screwy here. And that's because the base math in Fusion is always based on the metric system. So I do need to put the bald eagle units of freedom in here, which is IN for inch. And now you can see we're starting to get a different result. Now that result did go the wrong direction, which is why I love to actually test things and verify. So instead of subtracting 0.125, we're gonna go ahead and add that 0.125. Again, stock Z high minus surface Z low. Then we're gonna add an additional eighth inch, which is my tool cutter, putting me at 2.425. So everything is stacking up and adding correctly. 
so that I can auto populate my pull distance based on one, my part length plus the stock on the front from my work offset, as well the width of my actual tool. So for me, if this is something I'm commonly doing is just pulling out far enough to part off, I'm not pulling out multiple times, I would actually turn this guy into a template. And the cool thing is, is I would actually go through and I would grab my grab, my bar pull, and my return, and I would throw these all into a template. And if you're not familiar with templates, this is your first time seeing it, I would highly recommend that you start setting things up like this. So I would call this maybe something like single bar, Pull, and you could actually even add part off to this. Uh, let's go back and say with part off. And we're going to go ahead and save that. Notice how my part off isn't incorporated with anything yet. So I'm going to go ahead and reorder this. And one thing to keep in mind on your guys' part offs, if this is something you're going to do, I would recommend that when you set your part off, do your approach Z and your retract Z as first point not safe Z. As you can see, if I use safe Z, I'm going to be in the danger zone of where my chuck is. So this is how you avoid that by using your first and last. Now I am going to go through and highlight all four of these toolpaths. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to update the toolpath we've already created. So as you guys are seeing here, is I'm going to go into my car or into my cloud library. So we're going to do a single bar pull with part off. I'm actually going to select and then I'm going to overwrite this. So some people forget that you can overwrite your templates inside of Fusion 360 and streamline your process. So what does this look like once we have done the couple of steps of one, using parameters to control my part, two is creating a template so that I don't have to repeatedly stack four toolpaths to achieve a task. Well, we went ahead and did some OD work on this part. Now we're going to go in and I'm going to right click. We're going to just go to my template. And as you're going to see, it auto-populated everything I need to be able to run this section of code. Now, it gets cooler because if we go into our setup, and let's just say, for example, on this part, I'm running point one off the front of my part, and we regenerate all of our toolpaths. If we go to that bar pull length, notice how it's now 2475 because we've added an extra 100 thou in automatically. Again, this makes it easy for you, it makes it easy for your guys on the floor for programming to spend a few minutes and set up an expression that allows to auto calculate these dimensions and sizes on the fly. With that, as always, it has been a great day. It is Friday. It's five o'clock somewhere. I hope you guys like this content. And I want you guys to know I am back now at my home for a few weeks and I'm going to start dumping more and more content. I would highly recommend that you go ahead and leave a comment down below on something you're really wanting to see, as well as hit a like and give me a subscribe if you guys enjoy this content so that we can get in front of the algorithm and get this content out to anybody and everybody looking for this kind of information.